Father, we thank you that you are a God that desires our worship. That your son Jesus said that the ones that worship in spirit and in truth are the type of worshipers that the Father seeks. You look for. And, and our desire this morning is that our worship will be pure and that it will be from our hearts and that it will be not through our power but through the power of your spirit. And as we open your word, it is holy. It is true. There is no wrong in it. And so may your spirit use what he breathed upon men of old to write. May he use that afresh in our lives this, this week. And I pray that in Christ's name, amen. You may be seated. Glad to see you back this morning. I, uh, just an update of last week we prayed and God put his hands around the orphanage in Jamaica and around our babies there. And they got some rain and some wind, but nothing devastating, nothing tearing anything up. But as we prayed, God heard the cries of his children, and amazing thing. Uh, continue to pray for those in Haiti and, and the mission work that is going on there through all of that devastation. And not only there, but in the other islands and up the East Coast, a lot of churches today will not be able to meet uh, because of the storm's devastation to their buildings, to their homes. So we have a lot of brothers and sisters that are uprooted today. And, and the great thing is we serve a God that not only is here. Hey, the psalmist wrote, where can I go to get away from God? Before, if I ascend into the, the heights of the mountains, behold, thou art there. If I descend into the depths of Sheol, behold, thou art there. Hey, it, God is. And so we're thankful for that. But do be in prayer because there are a lot of brothers and sisters in Christ that are, are going through a rough time now. And uh, God was very merciful to us. Go with me to Psalm 146, please. Psalm 146. We continue this morning talking about uh, Christians, politics and economics. Boy, what a crazy week this has been, not only with the environment, with the, the weather, Hurricane Matthew, but in politics, too. And, and I love what is happening. If you look, what's happening is that the politicians are now aiming at things that have nothing to do with the uh, agendas of politics. So now they're getting personal and they're going back years and dragging things out of people's closets. And I'm not condoning that stuff. All of that is bad, you know. Uh, the junk is bad. But the thing is, where is God in the midst of it? We serve a God that, as according to how your, your history ranks up, eight to 10,000 years ago, spoke and, and the worlds were formed. He spoke and, and animals began to crawl and swim and fly. The waters were divided. He, he spoke and the clouds in the sky. It, birds sang songs to him. Uh, hippopotamuses. <laughs> we, we serve the creator. Yes, we Everything that is, that was, or that shall be is because of him. And everything that was, is, or shall be exists for his glory. And that includes you and I. And so he created all of this. But another thing that he did was that the desire of his heart, and this is overwhelming, the desire of the creator's heart was to have fellowship with mankind. And I don't mean fellowship like you and I think of sit down over a meal to eat. I meant intimate communion with Adam and Eve and those that would come behind them. 
because of man's sin, it broke that fellowship. But he loved us so much that what he did, he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross that that fellowship may be restored in my life with my creator and in everyone's life that will turn to him. We sang a song a minute ago that called him father. You are a good, good father. Yes. But as a father, he also dictates right from wrong. And as a father, he blesses or he withholds blessings. That's his desire. That's up to him. You say, why doesn't God just bless everybody? Because it's up to God. And God has decided that if you want blessings, you live according to the way I want. I, I, the problem with today is, and I'll get on a soapbox for a while. Uh, the, the, the problem with today is we have too many parents trying to please their children instead of trying to be parents to their children. And, and so they, they grow up thinking that they deserve everything. I, we don't deserve anything but hell. Nothing. Everything else is a mercy and a blessing to us. We woke up this morning. Wasn't it great to wake up this morning and the difference between the humidity today from yesterday? Today it was like, I started to call Chris and say, let's go fishing. I, I mean, today was beautiful, right? You go out and it's like, Wow, thank you, Lord. Less humidity. And it's just wonderful. Why? It pleases our Father to bless his children. The psalmist wrote and said this Blessed is the nation, the country, the people, and may I also say also say the individual. Blessing blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. The people he chose for his inheritance. More than happy is the nation. Have you noticed how unhappy our nation has become? Have you noticed how unhappy because we think that everything belongs to us and we, th we have forgotten the blesser and we have started craving the blessings? And when you do that, you get in trouble. God's word says that the nation who puts Jehovah God, the creator, who puts him at the very front of their politics, of their culture, of their being, they will be blessed. Now, we were that nation at a time. We were that nation at a time that began that we followed the precepts of our creator. Go back and read. Our founding fathers. Go back and read things that George Washington said that, that even Abraham Lincoln years later said about who God is, calling him their creator and the supreme being that upholds the nation. They knew. They, they understood it. We even got to the place that in the 1900s we began to stamp our coinage in God we trust. Because we understood that. World War I, World War II, we began to understand without God and us being on God's side, we were really going to get whooped. And so we cried out to God. But since then, we've been backing away from our Creator. And, and understand, as we back away from our Creator, we are intentionally, as a nation, Telling our creator, we don't want what you want, and that is communion with us. Notice that? He created us for communion, for fellowship. But the more we back away, we are literally saying, we don't want communion with you. We don't want what you desire. We want nothing. Now, when we as a nation do that, God withholds his blessings. You say, well, that's not fair. That is more than fair. That is more than fair. 
Like I said, parents with children, if you're still blessing your children whenever they're talking back to you, shame on you. Shame on you. I am still, I am still the avid supporter of the Board of Education upon the seat of knowledge. I, I still believe that. You know, God still puts you to be mom and daddy. And you will answer to Almighty God for the way you raise your children. So when we as a nation pull away from God, God goes, you do not want what I want, so I will withhold all that I have for you. And the psalmist wrote and said, but more than happy is the nation whose God is the Lord. And, and look what he says. He says, the people he chose for what? For his inheritance, not my inheritance, but for what he desires to give to you and I. What he desires to give to you and I, blessed are those people. So what we have done is that we have withstood from God. We said, we don't want you anymore. And God said, well, what I had to give to you, the inheritance I was going to give to you, I will withhold now. I want to show you some things economically of what has happened to our nation. First of all, the United States closed out its fiscal year on September the 30th of this year with a debt level of $19,573,444,736.79, whatever that number is. Right? That's how much in debt we are. You thought your credit card bill was bad. That's when we closed out the end of September. I don't know about you, but that's a lot of money. All right. At the end of the fiscal year of 2016, the total government debt in the United States, including federal, state, local, is expected to be $22.4 trillion. So it's not just $19 trillion, but when you add the states and the local government's indebtedness, 22 and almost a half trillion dollars. Washington's annual interest payments alone amount to $255 billion per year. That's how much we're paying in interest because we had to borrow money. Now, I know that doesn't rank up with some of your paychecks. Is that wild? $255 billion. Now, now, let's put that into perspective. If you would take 2,000 years ago, and let's round it off. 2,000 years ago, Jesus was born. Round it off. And every day since 2,000 years ago, every day you were to spend a million dollars. That debt would be $700 billion. Really, it's 730 point whatever. But you got the idea. You got it? We would be in debt 700 billion. We are in debt 19 trillion. Why? God will not be mocked. Hang on, you're going to really like the next statistic. $2,000 of the taxes that you paid to the IRS this year accomplished nothing more than renting the money that we've already spent. Each one of us. The $19 trillion in debt translates to a $152,000 bill for the average family. You owe $152,000 on the money that the government spent. You cannot mock God and get away with it. You say, well, why finances? Because watch what has happened. We have pulled away from family like we were in the 1900s, the early 1900s, and we have gotten into this stuff. We have become a consumer nation, and whenever you become a consumer nation, you are more concerned about money than what you are a family. You are more concerned about money than you are God. And because of that, God hits us where we will hurt the most. 
and the government and the people of our culture. Watch. We started in July seeing Christmas stuff put on the shelves. Now, when that happens, our focus is more on purchase and spend on our own evil desires than it is the purpose of Christmas. And God says, fine, go back and read Romans chapter 1. God says he turns this over to our desires. Even though, even though all of nature points to heaven saying there is a God. God says, even nature declares I am here, and yet because you don't want any part of me, because you don't want this fellowship that I desire, I'll give you to your own means. And now we're $19 trillion debt. You can blame it on anybody you want to. It, it doesn't matter. The fact is we're in $19 trillion debt. We are in trouble. No, we're past trouble. We are past trouble. Oh, and ten thousand dollars on a credit card is trouble. Nineteen trillion. We are past trouble. Why? Because we have turned away from God. Let me show you something that overwhelming majority of us will not know. In the Old Testament, if you will remember, whenever Joshua led the children of Israel into the promised land. They came upon the Canaanites, and one of the problems they had was the Canaanites worshipped Baal. Now, Baal is this, quote-unquote, God statue that stood for the pagans of the land, the Canaanites. He was the god of fertility. And they worshipped him so that their produce would be greater harvest, and not only that, but so that their children... They would have more children so that their land would be good. They even went so much into having uh, uh, prostitutes, male and female prostitutes, at their temple because he was the god of fertility. And so in order to worship him. Not only that, but what they would do is that they would take their children, their newborn children, and they would sacrifice them unto Baal. Did you get that? They would take their newborn children and they would sacrifice them unto the god Baal. Well, in Syria, last year, 2015, when ISIS went into Syria, they blew up the, the temple of Baal. And the people got mad and everything. They were going through blowing up artifacts and blowing up all of the ruins and all of that kind of thing. Well, a group of people got together and decided that was such a horrible thing that ISIS did. They wanted to do a reproduction of the gateway to the Temple of Baal. And so they did that in London, and then they decided they were going to do that in New York City. So in April of last year, they decided that they were going to bring the Bell Arch to the city of New York City in order to protect and to bring to life so that all of us Americans could understand the Temple of Baal and what had happened there. There was an outcry from the churches in that area. There was an outcry uh, along the conservative reaches. And so they canceled And there was a big celebration because of prayer that it had been canceled. Little known to most people, September the 19th, last month, they erected it in the city park of Manhattan. They did not do a big fanfare about it because they had had such craziness from the religious right about bringing it. But they unveiled it on September the 19th, and it stands in the city park in Manhattan as the Temple of Baal, the archway into the Temple of Baal. Do you understand that we sacrifice more unborn children per year than all of those that have been lost in the wars that we have fought in. They made a big deal about this. 
They brought in reporters. They brought in, but they didn't make it too big. But they sort of snuck it in. Any time that you pull away from God, and any time you begin to erect idols to a foreign God, God is not going to put up with it. You may think, well, we live in 2016. And none of that stuff matters. May I tell you what? God doesn't live in 2016. He is not constrained by time. God created time. Time did not create God. And because God created time, he is not constrained by the periods of time. He lives outside time but interacts within time. And any time as a nation we begin to erect, and you can say, well, it's just for archaeologists and and for that reason. I don't care what it's for. We didn't erect the temple. We didn't go, oh, well, let's erect the site of the temple in New York City from, from Jerusalem. We didn't do that. We fuss and fight whenever a city, a locality, wants to put the Ten Commandments up. We fuss and fight. We have lawsuits. But no, let's erect the gateway to the temple of Baal. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. What's the other side of that coin? Not blessed is the nation who turns away from the Lord. We are in such a downward spiral that you and I have got to become prepared that we are going to do and we are going to stand on what God's word says. There is no getting around it any longer. You cannot be a lukewarm Christian as we go forward. You cannot be. You cannot decide today, well, I'm going to like Jesus and I'll be a fan of Jesus, but I'm not going to love and worship him and follow him. You cannot do that anymore. Satan is on the attack. Satan is on the attack not only in the government and in the culture, but he is forcing his hand on the families that belong to Almighty God. How does he get to us? He gets to us, and and watch this. For those of you whose main concern are finances, he will get to you through your finances. For those of you that value family more than finances, he will get to you through your family. See, Satan's not dumb. He hasn't had 8,000 years just to sit around twiddle his thumbs and go, I don't know what I'm going to do. But for 8,000 years, he has understood that mankind is desperately wicked. And the intent of our hearts is to do wickedness unless and until we turn to Almighty God. And so what he has done is that he understands That he cannot hurt God. He cannot hurt Jesus Christ. And so I'm going to hurt the children. Now, you and I have got to understand something. And we've got to dig in our heels. And we've got to begin to say, now, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Because no matter what the other people do. And let, let me preface with this. I am an American. I am proud to be an American. Thank the Lord I live in America. But above and beyond being an American, I am a citizen of God's kingdom. Above and beyond. I owe my allegiance to Jesus Christ, my Savior, before I owe my allegiance to the United States of America. And I am not speaking bad about the United States of America. I'm just telling it like it is. Okay, I belong to the kingdom with a capital K. To the kingdom. And because of that, my allegiance to the king has got to come first. I will vote in November. I will let my voice be heard in November. 
because I am of the kingdom. I will not vote according to Republican, Democrat, Libertarian, Socialist, whatever the other agendas are. I will vote according to the Big K Kingdom agenda. But I've also got to understand in these days I've got to stand with what God desires. And when I do that, God still, in the midst of the culture, in the midst of $19 trillion deficit, God still blesses his children. Because God is not constrained by time, he is not constrained by cultures. When we go to Jamaica this week, we go not to change the culture of Jamaica. We go that God might change the hearts of Jamaica. We do not want to Americanize them. We want to kingdomize them. We never go to Jamaica, to, to Guatemala, to Nigeria, to wherever we might go. We never go with the intent of making them be like us but with the intent of praying they become like Jesus. Because it's about the kingdom. Amen. About the kingdom. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, wherever, not just the United States, wherever on earth as it is in heaven. That's our purpose. So whenever you look at the things going on, and, and, and come on, let's, aren't you just sick with politics? Aren't you just sick and tired of them? You, you, you know, I, I, uh, everybody's voting for change, and everybody's promising for change, and everybody's promising. The only change we're going to get is when Jesus comes back. You know, that's the change we need. But what I want to do this morning is that I want to give you as a child of God an understanding of what you, you, ions, we ions, usens, what we can do during these days. Psalm 146. You ready? No, you're not. Praise the Lord. Um. I heard you. Praise the Lord. Woo. The, the psalmist writes, and, and I'm going to teach you Hebrew right here. You ready? Hebrew. Praise the Lord in Hebrew. You ready? Hallelujah. That's Hebrew. Hallelujah. From, from Psalm 146 all the way to the end of the book of Psalms. 146, 147, 148, 149, and the last one, Psalm 150, all begin with, Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! See, in the midst of struggles, praise the Lord! Whenever things are going great, praise the Lord! Whenever our country owes $19 trillion, praise the Lord! You say, how do you praise God about that? Because my inheritance is in heaven uh, where moth cannot mess with it, thief cannot break in and steal. It will not rust. The United States ain't touching my inheritance. <laughs> praise the Lord. Yeah, you know, they might get my bank account and they're going to wish they hadn't because there ain't much there. <laughs> but they ain't getting my inheritance. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, my soul. In other words, hallelujah. Hallelujah, not, not my lips, not my mouth, but from the very depths of my being, hallelujah. Man, hallelujah. You, you could put Donald on the TV, you could put Hillary there, you could put Gary Johnson, you could put whomever, and you could still say, Woo, glory, praise the Lord, Jesus is coming back. I will praise the Lord, how long? All of my life. How long is all, all, entirety, right? I will praise the Lord in the entirety of my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. I'm going to sing praise to my God. Good times, bad times, yucky times, fantastic times. Well, I'm going to sing praises to my God. Notice he doesn't say that you have to have a beautiful voice. Because it's supposed to come from the inside. 
supposed to come from the inside. Well, glory, praise the Lord. Well, Pastor, I don't know a lot of songs. Jesus loves me. Oh, yes, he does. Jesus loves all the children of the world. Yes, he does. If you're happy and you know it, say amen. Amen. I, all my life, I will sing praises to the Lord. Ha <laughs> ha. Here we go. You ready? No, you're not. In 2016, as we head towards November, verse 3 says, Do not put your trust in presidents, in human beings who cannot save. When their spirit departs, they return to the ground. On that very day that they die, their plans come to nothing. I don't care what they said they were going to change. The only change they're going to do is in the dust. Because they're humans. We are all going to die except with the coming back of Jesus Christ together as children at home. We're all going to die. And no matter what your plans are, whether you're the president of these United States or whether you're digging ditches for a living, you die, you gone, you dead. We all dead. We all dead. We're all gone. We're all gone. Their plans come to nothing. Blessed are us whose hope is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in Jehovah our God. Blessed are us. You be blessed. I'm blessed. You blessed. I'm blessed. More than happy. How can you be more than happy whenever your bank account's dwindling? How can you be more happy, more than happy whenever the politicians are ranting and raving? How can you be more than happy whenever the, the country owes $19 trillion? Because my hope is not in the United States of America, even though I love it and give my life for it. My hope is in the kingdom, the big K of Jesus Christ. That's my hope. I, I ain't, my hope ain't here. Yeah, you're missing if your hope's here. You done missed the boat. It done sailed without you. Blessed are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God. Why? He is the maker of heaven and earth. The sea and all them tadpoles and whales and sea urchins and jellyfish, everything that's in them, my God made. He remains faithful, and the word there can be, can be translated faithful or truthful. He remains truthful. He remains faithful. How long? How long's forever? Forever. forever. That's way beyond whenever you die. He's still going to be faithful whenever you die. He's still going to be faithful in 2020 whenever we look at electing another president. Our God is still faithful. He's still truthful. He's still faithful. And, 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 and hang on here because I want you to see this. If you don't get anything else, I want you to get this before you leave this morning. He's going to remain faithful because his plan never changes. His plan, his desire is that you and I are into a loving communion relationship adjoined with him. That's his plan. Whose president does not mess up his plan? You mess up his plan if you desire not to have a relationship with him. The president can decree, I'm signing an executive order that you will not worship Jesus Christ. Well, huh? you can't stop me. You can't stop me. I will still worship him. You see, nobody can mess up God's plan but you. Whenever you decide, I will not, God, I will not listen to you. I will not be in relationship with you. That's between you and God. That's between you and God. You say, but preacher, they, they keep on doing stuff against religions. Yeah, they will, but that doesn't change what I do with my God. My house is, is always an interesting house. Yeah, well, some things you can't. And I messed up the other day. I messed up big time. Because Friday I was off work and I, and I stopped and, 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 and got me a drink and, 
And along with the drink, I got me some chocolate-covered almonds. And, <laughs> and, and I didn't eat them all. I just ate half of them. And whenever my wonderful, darling, forgiving, compassionate uh, uh, wife came home, I forgot to put them up. And they were sitting on the counter. Well, anyway, that's enough of that story. <laughs> no matter what is desired of you, you are the one that makes the decision. You are the one, I am the one that decides on a daily basis, I will walk with Jesus Christ today. I will listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. I will heed the commandments of his word. And it doesn't matter what anybody else says. This is my relationship with my creator. This is my relationship through his son, Jesus Christ. I am a citizen of the kingdom. I will follow him. And the Bible tells me again in Psalm 146, blessed is the person whose God is the Lord. Not the God of Baal, not the God of money, not the God of culture, not the God of whatever it may be, but whose God, the person they worship, is Jehovah. That is the person that is blessed. He doesn't stop, though. You ready? Verse 7. Our God upholds the cause of the oppressed. And gives food to the hungry. You worried about groceries? You need to circle that verse. Because if you are a true worshiper of him, he just made you a promise. You get hungry, he's going to give you food. Ready? The Lord sets prisoners free. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the foreigner and sustains the fatherless and the widow, but he frustrates the ways of the wicked. That's my God. That's my Father. That's my King. He, He does these things. You could say, well... I believe in circumstances. You can believe in circumstances all you want to. I believe in God. I, you know, you can circumstance yourself on out of here. Because God does these things. God helps those that are seeking him with all their heart, that are living life to be a follower of Jesus Christ. He sustains them. He gives food when they get hungry. He preserves them. Why? Why? Because his plan is to have a relationship with me. His plan is he loves me. Now, when I love somebody, guess what? If they're hungry, I want them to be fed. If they're stumbling, I want them to be picked up. If they're hurting, I want them to be calmed and to be given love to them. If they are in need, I want their needs to be met. Why? Because I love them. And if I, as an earthly father, do that, how much more our heavenly father? But. There ain't no but. Get your butt out of there. <laughs> Remove your butt. There ain't no but. It doesn't say but. You know? Some of that, no, I can't go there. I'll be in trouble. <laughs> Do you hear what God's word says? All of this craziness is going on within the borders of our country. Understand this. Our God is so far above the borders of this world that none of this affects him. You say, but pastor, it affects us. Yes, it does. But that's why his spirit moved on men of old to write this to me and to you to remind us God is still God. 
God is still God. It doesn't matter if you believe in him or if you don't. That's not going to affect him. That just affects you. That affects you. We're not done yet. You ready? Verse 10. The Lord, Jehovah, reigns. Do you, do you know what? We, we don't understand this so much. Do you know what happens when a king reigns? A king reigns and at his command, things happen. I, I mean, it, this is so much better than a president or a prime minister or a chancellor or whatever. Because a king in those days... A king, if you entered the king's presence and had not been invited, if he did not extend his scepter to you, you're gone. And I don't mean just removed. I mean you're gone. You, 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 you're gone. And when he spoke, it was law. The Medes and the Persians, they had these scribes walking around behind the king and when Darius or Nebuchadnezzar or Cyrus would write and speak, they would speak. These scribes would write everything down that they said because their word was law. And it could not be changed. When God speaks, it happens. Now, it may not be in your timing, but it's in his timing. The Lord, he reigns. Who is like unto the Lord our God? No one. Well, 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 Satan. No, he's not. Satan's a dimwit. You know, let's understand that. Satan was a created being and he chose not to continue to serve the Lord who is God. He chose to go against God. He's not like God. The reality is God could, <coughs> and Satan would be gone. There is none like the Lord our God, and he reigns. He reigns. The Apostle John writes that when Jesus is there in the upper room with the disciples, he writes and he says, and Jesus, knowing what was to come, and that the Father had given him all authority upon heaven and earth, took off his outer cloak and wrapped around himself a servant's towel, picked up a basin and water and began to wash the disciples' feet. The important part of that is he understood that the Father had given him authority, all authority in heaven and on earth. Is Satan as great as Jesus? No. Are the demons? No. Are the presidents? No. Are the prime ministers? No. So you and I have got to understand from a heavenly viewpoint that our God reigns. Well, why do all the people do it? Why doesn't God just stop everything? Why doesn't God stop all the shootings? Why doesn't God stop all the massacres? Why doesn't God stop all this stuff? Because, you ready for this? Because we have told God we don't want him. We have. When we tell God we don't want him, why should he interfere with what we want to do? We told God we don't want you. We don't want prayer in the school. We don't want Bible reading in the school. We don't want your commandments on, on, on the, uh, the courthouse steps. Well, we don't even want in God we trust on the coinage. We don't want you, God. And then something happens and we go, oh, where was God when that took place? You done kicked him out. You done kicked him out and, and you want him to be Santa Claus. God's not Santa. He is the creator that desires a relationship, but he doesn't force himself on us. And so then he just leaves us and says, you think you got this handled without me? Take care of it. But the same thing is true individually, people. If you don't walk with him, if you refuse 
this relationship that God desires with you through his son, Jesus Christ, then God will allow you to be stupid and make the, re, the choices that in turn will sprout into a harvest of pain and sorrow for you. He will. He will. One of the wonderful things is, though, we serve a loving God. That when I come back to him and I repent of my sins and I go, Father, I was dumb. I was stupid. I should never have made that decision. I did it on my own without asking you. Please forgive me. John wrote years later, and if we, if Stephen confesses his sin, God is faithful and just to forgive Stephen of his sin and to cleanse Stephen from all unrighteousness. And you could put your name there. When I come back, what loving father, what loving father when your child has been bad and they, they are really repentant and they return to you, what loving father does not want to hold them tight? You know? The Bible says... Jehovah reigns forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations. Hallelujah. Presidents come and go. Matter of fact, generations from now, if Jesus doesn't come back, in a few generations, somebody will say, well, President Trump or President Hillary or President Johnson, and the children will go, who? They will. They will. Talk to your children. Well, President Eisenhower, who? President Truman, who? Okay, President Nixon, who? Your children say that now. So understand that what we are getting ready to go into, we have got to look at this election as kingdom people. Kingdom people. What is it God desires? He desires that our nation turn back to him. And when God's people return to him, he will hear their prayers. He will heal their land. We have got to be the ones to do that. But in the midst of it all, you decide for your household. You decide for your life whom you will serve. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. In the good times and the bad times, we will serve the Lord. In the good times, the bad times, we will serve the Lord with every part of our being. We will be beckoned unto his command and I may be called the biggest idiot on earth, but my inheritance does not rest here. It rests in heaven. And that's where my hope is. It is. And this week I get to go to Jamaica and tell them about my father. You know, there's a bunch of people in Lehigh Acres, Florida, that want you to know about their father. How many children does he have? Oh, he's got bunches of children. That's right. Pray for Jamaica. Pray for our trip this week. Pray for America. These are sorrowful times for us as a nation. Pray for us as Christians that we will stand. We will stand we will stand for the kingdom of God and for his Savior, Jesus, who is the Christ. Let's pray. With your heads bowed, I, I know this week I've talked with um, three different families, things going on in their home. And like I said earlier, how Satan likes to hurt the children of God, how Satan likes to try to destroy their life. And we as a church family need to pray for each other. 
So right now, as we get ready to take up our morning offering, would you just pray for those sitting around you? Would you just pray that God would protect their homes, their marriages, their children, that God would protect them and give them strength to follow him during these days? Heavenly Father, I lift up our family here. You have blessed us with such a wonderful church family. Lord, we love each other because we love you. And Lord, this, this, this world, you know, this world just is crazy. The decisions made by politicians lead to crazy decisions made by individuals. We are nothing without you as individuals. We are nothing without you as a nation. Our hope rests in you. And we acknowledge that before you this morning. We acknowledge that we are nothing but clay. We acknowledge that you are everlasting. And that you are good, good father. You are wonderful God. You are an almighty, omnipotent, omniscient God. You are the prince of peace that we need so badly in our lives and within this world today. You are the God that not only conquers, but you are the God that restores those that have been conquered. You are the God that releases our chains and the God that bridges the gap that we cannot we cannot bridge ourselves. You are the God that feeds us when we're hungry, that heals us when we are sick, that restores us into fellowship with our Creator. You are God. We denounce this gateway of Baal in New York City. As your children, we repent for what they have done on our soil. God, we ask, that you would take it down. For we do not want to worship any other God but you. We do not want our nation to worship any other God but you. You are the one, the true, the everlasting, the living God. The creator, the sustainer. And it is through your son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life for us on the cross, that we have fellowship with you. We admit that. We can that with our lips this morning help us to live that in our lives this week thank you for what you're going to do in Jamaica but Lord we have families that are hurting here and as your family we lift them up to you this morning work in their lives work in their homes work in their relationships oh God that they might find strength centered around Jesus Christ. For we pray this in his holy and precious name. Amen.